Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Code with Italians. Today, uh, you might have noticed it's Code with Italian singular, uh, and uh, <laughs> that's because uh, Ivan, unfortunately, is off sick. Uh, but we have Eric. So, well, Eric on this side. Hey, Eric. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thank you. Italian. No, you're not. Very much not. Although you also like, uh, like uh, the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> so yes today uh we decided uh we chose pain uh so we decided uh hey why don't we try to do something with bluetooth live and see how that goes um <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh eric has very kindly uh agreed to try and reverse engineer the protocol for this weird LED thing, yeah, that that thing that is holding is the same, the same as this. This is technically showing the code with Italian's logo, but it's it's terrible. Uh, use your <laughs> imagination, I guess. <laughs> so we, we we could mention that it's 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 a LED display with thirty two by thirty two pixels, so the resolution is it's four K. Yeah, a little bit below. <laughs> it's also I love I love that. The background here is supposed to be yellow, but it's white because it's also probably not very good at color reproduction. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not a problem for you, Eric, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. So, so normally this is the point where uh, we ask we ask you to introduce yourself and or even says a lot of stuff about the fact that you should subscribe. There is Amazon Prime. You can subscribe for free, blah, 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 blah. You probably have heard it a million times. I'm not even. I don't know the even thing. So <laughs> let's get into coding. <laughs> yes. Or actually, we should look at apps first. Is my, can, yes. can, I, can my screen be uh, seen? Now it can. OK. Yeah, so I'm screen sharing my, <clears throat> my phone. So we're going to look at the official app first for controlling this wonderful piece of technology. Just so I didn't expect you to say technology there. <laughs> I mean, first we have to like be amazed about the amazing intro animation there on splash screen and everything. I think it's great. So basically, does it work on uh, foldables? Have you tried it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> What's the stark magic? <laughs> I don't know anyone who uses that. So. <laughs> So we, we're gonna let's do this first very simple. Let's take here and let's write some text. Yeah, the, like test, and then send that over to the display. But please connect the hardware first. Yes, yes, that we have to do first. First, we have to. I mean, you did you connect always... earlier, but yeah, but it's fickle. You know, that was and so you now it's blinking a little bit. To say that it's connected. Oh, now it's lost connection. Oh, so no. now I have to restart the device because it's Bluetooth. I don't think it's Bluetooth per se. I think it's this device specifics, probably very cheap Bluetooth stack. Could be. I think I need to restart the app even. So it starts great, as everyone sees. And there's a reason why we want to reverse engineer this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. The idea is that eventually, maybe you'll be able to Air, show that some successful. stuff on that thing without using this app. Maybe. There, now we go. Now we'll do. We'll hold this one up so everyone sees that. I, if I write a test and then switch it over. Yeah, it says test. It's a it's miracle. A <laughs> so. Yeah, and so you can you uh, you can here set like different effects on the text, uh, like it should move. Snowflake? Uh, what the fuck is snowflake? It, it, snowflake means it's. Oh, <laughs> it's dropping the lines one at a time. Yeah, it's amazing. It looks exactly like real snow. <laughs> Laser is also kind of that. Oh, it's the same <laughs> thing, but from the side. Fine. And then there is like you can like, have it animated. Ooh. Left. What is oh, yes. breathe? Um it's it's basically 
Well, it's hard to tell now, right? Oh, it's changing the, the brightness? Yeah. Ah, uh, I see. So, yeah, yeah. So, so text is a simple one. Uh, and then you can do, uh, I'll save this, yes, please. And then you can like upload images, icons, sort of, be shown. And then there's a bunch of, so you can uh, like set it to show the clock. Uh, and then there is also do some... intelligent voice. That's my favorite part of the app. <laughs> <laughs> One more time for the audience under development. <clears throat> anyway, and then you can go into settings and you clear the screen and you delete everything. I'm not going to do that right now because we're going to look at that later. Um, that's the app. It's not awesome. It does get the job done, sort of, if you're fine with having this like that. But if you want to have a little bit more fine grain control, it's you know it would be fine, nice to be able to talk to it yourself and write your own code for it. So the idea is that we're going to figure out how to do it. And uh, <clears throat> as with uh, Bluetooth, your if you want to inspect your unknown Bluetooth device, this is the app you're going to use: NRF Connect, like from Nordic Semiconductors basically like a utility Bluetooth thing. Uh, now I start scanning. I have to restart the device because, well. Oh, because it was paired to the app? Probably. There, there it shows up. So here I knew beforehand that this was, this is the hardware address for my, my device, my screen. It's probably different for you. Uh, and then it shows up here. This is a name and it's it's not bonded. I press connect and it starts connecting. Uh, bonded is not the same as paired, right? Yes, it is. Well, paired doesn't really exist in the Bluetooth world. It is uh, bonded we're talking about. Okay. Bonded means that we we're, we store the encryption keys uh, on both sides mm -hmm. so that the next connection can happen faster. This device does not support bonding. so. Oh, you can so, only uh, connect and push stuff to it. Well, you, you, each connection is is uh, unauthenticated, so we oh, haven't. Okay. So that, know, what you're saying is that hackers could see the 32 by 32 gifs that I sent to it. Yes. Well, they, not that they could connect to it easily as uh, show their own thing. Oh no. <laughs> but but there is there seems to be a feature for setting a password on it. <laughs> what? What's the point? I don't know. Okay, fine. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're using Bluetooth Low Energy with the protocol on top of that is called GAT, Generic Attribute Profile, because abbrevi abbreviations is difficult. So It's G-A-T-T -T for those following yes. at home. <laughs> and th that is structured in form like you connect to, to, to a peripheral and you get a list of services once you have connected. And services are basically like logical groupings, so they don't carry any functionality. Uh, <clears throat> underneath the services, you have characteristics. This is a characteristic. And here you see UUID. It says, like, that's not a UUID that you would recognize as UUID. So what is it? It's Well, it's a short UUID that we use in Bluetooth. Basically, like, there's a predefined set, and there's just like just part of it that we use. So this is a generic access, and it has the, the generic standard characteristic for the device name. So if I read that one, it tells me the name of that Bluetooth device here. Mm. So this is usually what most Bluetooth BLE devices have. They have a generic access, and they have a device name. You can find that one out, unless you already found it out when you were scanning for it. And then there is two unknown services. There is <clears throat> this one. And it has an unknown characteristics and an unknown another unknown characteristic and uh, and then there is a characteristic user description and a characteristic client characteristic configuration. <clears throat> the second one, let's go through them here. So the first one is a uh, well. First of all, characteristics is like that's like the endpoints you talk to, like the input outputs. So you can you can write to them, you can read from them, and some of them you can subscribe to depending on what properties they have. So this one, here we have the ID for that one. 
it's unknown because it doesn't have a well-known UUID. So it ends up in the space of most GAT mm. characteristics, like custom defined for this device. The properties for this one is that you can write to it and you can write to it with no response. And that's two similar ones, but it's basically like write, regular writes in Bluetooth GET is that you write and you wait for a confirmation that the write was confirmed and you get the response back that, okay, you wrote this. Mm-hmm. Write with no response is basically you fire and forget. A little bit simplified. And then there is a user description. So sometimes characteristics has a user description carried on them, which basically is just a text string. In this case, it's a very useful sort of ID, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have I've Googled this one. I haven't found anything. So I think it's just a serial number or something. And this one you can write to. So I can like say, uh, write the value and it doesn't really matter. One, 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 one. Doesn't, nothing happens when I write to it. We're going to look at that later. And then we have a notification characteristic. And notify is basically like you, you subscribe to it and you mm. get up. So that's the way that the peripheral can send data back to you. You subscribe to a characteristic that allows notifications. So you can enable them here. Oop, notifications are enabled. And when I write a successful value here or valid value, it would it would uh, give me something back on this notification. Mm-hmm. Here. Okay. So this is basically the, the part there. There is another service down here. And uh, it's very similar, right? No response and then a notification, but no, uh, nothing, uh, no other characteristics that I need to carry, like can get a name from or anything. And after some investigation, I realized, I think this is the one that's used for OTA updates, but I'm not sure. Oh, I see. <laughs> I ignored this one because it's this one that everything is. So to. in terms of OTA updates, is that like the chip would set itself? in a like a special bootloader mode and then you send the binary and it writes it to the internal flash something like that sort of i think it's more like you you, you first send the the whole firmware uh-huh or the bluetooth over this to one of these characteristics and then once that is done it will say okay i got everything it seems correct it will do like a check sum of everything mm-hmm. and then it will do itself with a new firmware okay. so you don't go into bootloader mode and load the firmware. You send the firmware over and it takes care of it itself. So um, I have done an OTA update the other day, which I realized when I was doing it, I was like, that, this was probably a bad idea. What if it goes wrong and I can't get a new screen? But it worked. So, um, Or what if, if they change everything? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but, I tried different values writing this one here. So like I, if I write a text here, I'll say, hello. And I send that one. It still says test here. Mm-hmm. And no matter if I send it on the other characteristics either. I tried that, tried that one. So I realized that, okay, I don't have much options here to, like I can't figure it out. Although uh, the message I can send by default is 20 bytes, probably a little bit larger on these ones. So. That's a lot of data to guess. So my second second idea was basically to uh, go into the settings, and we're gonna go. Oh, and to developer options, and there is a fancy thing called H H Bluetooth HCI Snoop Lock. Basically, what it's not Snoop Dog, Snoop yeah. Lock. So it basically writes a log for all the Bluetooth traffic <laughs> into the uh, you know, to, to, to a file. Um, and then you can take that file, you can import it in Wireshark, and you can inspect all the traffic. The problem is it doesn't work well. It's First of all, in order to get the file, you have to do a full bug report from the device to get it out there because it's in a read-only directory. <clears throat> and secondly, it doesn't capture all data just capture like a high level stuff. So they can really see the, de- the messages sent mm. in between. So I was like, okay, I could get a custom AUSB device and build it with the right flags to the, so that it has full logging on the, on the Snoop log, but well, let's, let's try another approach. Let's decompile the app. <laughs> so I did that. 
Yep is how um, how much? Eighty nine megs. Something yeah, like something that. like that. A lot of native codes. We're here. I'm just looking at the Java deep compile code, and there are some amazing libraries here. I mean, there is like fast JSON from Alibaba. There is Bump Tech, and then there's there's uh, Chad. What the hell is Chad? Chad? Oh, what can Chad be? <laughs> it's um, I think it's mm. something multi item quicker. I think it's something with Recycle Review. Mm. That's my guess. Uh, there's Orm Light, our good old Orm Light. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yes, you all do. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, there is like Retrofit, OKIO, Kotlin stuff. It is clearly written in Kotlin because there's intrinsics and stuff added to the mm -hmm. thing. But underneath, like Wi Fi, com, Wi Fi LED. BLE library, you find most of the code that we want to look at. Oh, so they had like a, an SDK from whoever created the device. Yeah, I think so. Or because iPixels here is the yeah, that's the actual app. So I think they got an SDK to talk to this this library, which was the BLE library. Mm -hmm. And in, inside there, you find the classes called base send, which defines the messages. So for instance. After much searching around, I found this delete all data. I was like, okay, that we'll try that one. Delete all data. What could happen? It's I probably reset everything. So what it does, it sends a byte array with four zero three and the mean value of, of a byte minus two. That's what it sends. So I wrote my app and tried that one, and it works. So mm. I can go back into my app. Hopefully it works now, and I can launch that one instead. Let's see. Oops, it failed compiling because I have changed something. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's actually comment out the stuff that I don't want here first. So I want to do the delete all data. So I want this right to the characteristic. And let's delete uh, stuff that we don't need right now. I should have prepared this before I felt it's fine. So, so what I do here, here I use the new Bluetooth library from Google, the blue Android X Bluetooth, mm -hmm. which is in alpha two and has been since December. <laughs> Just mentioning it. Um, so whatever I have uh, this, Function here, which just basically writes to the, the characteristic I pick, and here is the byte array I want to write. So it's 403 and the mean value of byte. So it's basically the same we had here. Mm -hmm. And all this one up, and we'll hope that the connection works. And run, 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 run. I have my app, I'll start it. And it doesn't work because I have to you know, plug it out. Oh, because it was connected to the Nordic. Uh... Maybe, or it was just tired. There we go. <laughs> and there it got reset. <laughs> so here I wrote in the logs here, I say, I, I wrote this by. I, I see, yep. Got a successful there. Uh, I didn't get any any updates. If I would have printed the, the notifications here, I would oh, have Oh, because you are still, you're listening to the notifications at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So, so in this case, I realized, okay, so I got this. I got all this code here where it's basically like, okay, you send bytes like that, something happens. That's easy, right? Super easy. You can set the light, the LED lights, like the intensity here. Uh, uh -huh. 50 here is the default. I love, I love how the code is here. Like, look at it. Like, the, the set LED lights. And it, it defines our default one with 50. The value goes from 10 to 100. And then it takes the parameter you send here and changes the fourth one here. So instead of <laughs> maybe just, it's just in case, I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's the compiled code. Yeah, maybe but why it, would it initialize it with fifty? The compiler. Uh, so there is, and I remember I mentioned that they they have a password thing, so they have to uh, password here. Uh, I didn't dare to try this. It felt like let's let's not. Oh, it also must be exactly six characters. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, it's safer than four. 
Yes. Uh, and there's a bunch of other here set upside down. I think this is why I couldn't rotate it at just 90 degrees because it, see, it feels like it just has upside down rotation. Uh, here you have the update OTA. They have sport. You can send sport data. Not sure what that is. I don't do sport, so I ignored it. And then they have, and this, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it took me what? Colock? Colock? Yep. Ah, clock. Because <laughs> it does set the, get the dates <laughs> and tries to set it. But does it, does it that send it once or? I, I think what it does is it sets it. Uh, oh, and then internally and then it has it, a clock and it updates yeah. it. Yeah. I see. Uh, I tried replicating it, this one. So I don't know what I and Z and Z2 means here. So, but, so I tried different ones for those. But basically it doesn't do. doesn't do much. It does sets, it work with the app? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It works. Maybe if you I need to, be... before setting the colloc mode, you also need to do some, you know, initialization dance or something. Uh, could be, because um, there is, if you, if you, well, we haven't seen that one yet, but there is something called get lead type. Uh... And you need to pass that in the parameter. But if I do like this, and then, uh, I also need to wait for my, I'll just wait for the data. Is that like a suspend thing or? Yeah, we're in a suspend context here, but I, 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 I took a shortcut here. I have a channel that I have to receive data from. Just oh, I see. This. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, you're doing it in the line above. I am, um, okay. Result, let's say, yeah. And notification channel receive. Oh, you have it in the line above, so maybe you don't need to. I do? It. Yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Good thing I read my own code when I'm writing. <laughs> Nobody likes to read your code, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. So we'll, we'll do that, that one. And then I first need to clear here. And then we run the app again. Now we'll see if I, now you should see. Now you need to, I need to disconnect and connect again. There's a lot of this. Oop. Aha, it connects. Yeah. So it connects, it's like the blinks, the connection thing. Did it? I didn't, never mm -hmm. saw it. Did you? Uh, we'll try it again. We'll try. It is a little bit. So you need to click that, and it does. And you see the blinking light. Aha! Yes. So that's the same. That's the same thing you see when you're connecting with the app. Mm -hmm. So I think that the first connect gets a lead type, and here you see this is the hex value for the for the notification I receive, like on the notification characteristic. Still have no clue what that means because we didn't you know, get the get lead type log anywhere. No, they, this is um, so the, the what happens there is I, I write to the characteristic saying, yeah. okay, get the lead. The, the message to get the lead type is this message mm -hmm. it's static in the in their code, yeah. And when I write that one in I the channel, get, yeah. I, so what what I happen have up here is that oh, okay I you have it in there okay okay with the notification characteristic and then I just send it to a channel here so that I, I can see I see I see you get here the channel is still like a buffer and everything mm -hmm. so I know that I will get one notification for every message I send so yep. I need to send a message and then receive the the, <clears throat> the notification so we know that this is the lead type and I can probably spend some time to interpret that one and try to figure out the real value here. Uh, I checked it and it seems that the lead type is based on uh, the width and the height, like mm -hmm. 32, 32 times three, like, well, it's RGB, so. 
Oh, so it's like the byte array yeah. size or something. Exactly. I think that's it, but I'm not sure. Mm. <laughs> you, you can read the code a little bit and you can find different values. They're, they also support a screen which has 64 by 64 pixels. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but that one has Wi Fi also. So ah, because easier. PLE is too slow for 64 by 64. <laughs> I honestly think that might be the reason because it can't fit everything into the messages. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try the, the this clock thing then. Let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. Let's leave the app again and relaunch it. So now you're sending the magic bytes. Yes, and I sent my birth date as a like <laughs> for, for the date. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then I run this. Oh, wait. I already run it. So yep. Here's the log. And... Oh, yeah. Again, plug it out. Uh, plug it in again. There we go. Connecting. Okay. And it didn't pass this one. Didn't send the clock this time. <coughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> so that one didn't work this time. So it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If I, what if I relaunch it? So it sounds like the clock thing doesn't always work. No, 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 no. It's it's yeah, and it's like in general everything is like sometimes it works. <laughs> so there is pretty much like it would be nice if I could properly decompile the code, but it's the code is super complicated in not a good way. <laughs> hey, at least I didn't write it in Java saying, oh, it's much better if you if it's like 600 honestly, kilobytes. Better for us, it would have been written in Java because of the Probably yes. Probably yes. Yeah, there we go. Duh. It's done things. Well, it still doesn't update the clock because, well, apparently the clock doesn't work properly. So, so that doesn't uh, that's... now. <laughs> it did work. It could also be that I'm missing some some step in between here. Um, it does but work yes. on mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing, right? I if I know. if I go into the yeah, I can't navigate the screen on there. If I go into the that one. And I set the clock. I'll pick that one. Oh, yeah, we need to connect first. Uh, yeah, like, all right, now it doesn't find it. The wobbly thing. Oh, yeah, we should talk about that one. The, <laughs> the, the icon for scanning, like, wobbles back and forth. Like, it's great. Amazing. So now if I will pick the clock. That's how the clock looks like. Mm -hmm. And when I got that working, uh, it, sent, it did show the time and everything. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know why it says Wednesday. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, when I did that, it sent it, it. The values I sent over didn't match, so I think there is some some shifting in those values, but. Again, if we if we look at the, the decompiled code, it literally like. It's just these. saying those are the numbers. Fuck it, right? Yeah. It's just casting them to a byte. Yeah, and uh, as far as I know, year would get like two thousand twenty four now. Mm -hmm. So when it crosses to byte here, what does that become? <laughs> I think it's just truncating it to the last byte. Isn't it rolling over? The... Wait, is that an integer? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's an integer. Can, can you try doing the same? Just take 1977 as an int and then convert it to byte. You could try that. Oh, you are doing that. Well, oh, but it was only 77. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. the problem. It's just like you know, it expects the weird fucked up value. <laughs> Okay, start the device. 
so you, it's the restarting devices, yes, regular what I'm used to with Bluetooth. So that's not yeah. so weird. You know what I was thinking? It would be great if someone made a Bluetooth, like a USB cable that has like a switch in it that just restart, interrupts and restarts the power. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you can find it on AliExpress. But now it doesn't doesn't update. So. <laughs> no. So there's probably something I'm missing in this one. Uh some some piece that has to be sent, etc. Oh, uh, maybe you need to put it in some operating yeah. mode or something. Exactly. So the he, there is a strange sort of inheritance going from this base send uh -huh. default implementation, and if you go up, you only end up in the code that calls the, blue, the Wi-Fi code. So, and there is like Kotlin code here that couldn't be decompiled properly, and I never had time to. Ah, uh, I see, I see. But again, we have to admire the the nice misspelling of the colloc. Colloc. It's not exactly a clock. It, it's a colloc. Colloc. Uh, but the rest of these things works. So I can turn the LED on and off by sending this one and setting it to zero here. Then it turns it on, off, and then set it to one. Is that like off. the yeah. whole panel? Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, DIY fun something? mode? Yes. Ooh. Uh, I did this, and then I had to restart the device because nothing wanted to work anymore. <clears throat> and I had to go in and clear it with the app. So. Not sure what it means, what it does. So, I think it uh, might be the um, the DIY like this one. Yeah, yeah, probably. But but it, this DIY Wi Fi it just takes an integer. So what is where is the data? Maybe that is which DIY fun mode. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's there are more more functions here for sending more complex complex data. Uh, Get current time, get lead types and rhythm. Send compact here takes a byte array and sends it over. So there's there's a lot of things. Anyway, this is about as far as I've gotten today. Um. <laughs> okay, let, let's try and see if we can actually get something to work. So I guess this is half Bluetooth and half how to <laughs> reverse engineer an app. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I mean we we can mention that the, the decompiling the code you use a JADEX tool. You just take the APK, run it through JADEX, and you get a bunch of Java code. Uh, it doesn't work great with all Kotlin code, I would say. So some yeah. of the problem is there. Um, so that would it, if someone knows how to get proper decompilation of Kotlin code, that would be <laughs> yeah. That would be nice. Uh, I guess the alternative would be to look at the Smiley, but yeah, but <laughs> that one is not easy to use. <laughs> no, it's essentially um, assem almost assembly. It's a bit more complicated than that. So there is here, and for those who don't know, Smiley is the intermediate representation uh, of the art slash Dalvik bytecode that is generated by the back Smiley tool that takes a compiled DEX file and, and turns it into assembly like. And then yeah. you can use, as Eric was saying, JADX to decompile that into Java or something that kind of looks like Java. So I have here um, the code for sending text. Let's look at that Ooh. one. I'm thinking that's the easier one to do. Let's see if I if find If we it. can get it to say Eric within the next yes. 45 minutes, then we have won. <laughs> yes. Then someone will, the, the, we will have a giveaway of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're done with it now. Uh, I now I have to find. Oh yeah, um, so this was a co piece of code that I started looking at. Like mm -hmm. this is a, a default method. Again, Kotlin generated code. Mm -hmm. 
when you have a function it has default parameters this is what it uses and i i love how like trying to read this <laughs> what <laughs> it's fun <laughs> um but then i realized that this one is actually the wi-fi stuff mm -hmm. so this one is not probably not the one that we should send but i should find the one here that is set text uh, send text or something and we have to find it up in the interface uh, send compat is, is the one they're using probably unless there is a text one here no it's not send this is sending a raw byte array yeah uh, it does that send data by sending the data there but finding the call for this one it's in defaults oh there is a simple send eric why don't you just use the simple send <laughs> right and now this so, is wi-fi send because of now course. We're back in, yeah exactly so now we're back in that one so i i think that the you know what though it, are you sure that they're not literally writing the same bytes to a Wi-Fi, like a socket over Wi-Fi that they're writing on Bluetooth? Because it Could might be. technically be that, you know, they've implemented the protocol. It doesn't matter what the transport is. It's just like... Yes. So I, 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 I have that code kind of prepared here. Oh. Because what I did was I took our dear reverse engineer code and like copied it. So like I have the default payload, which would be like the that method. Uh huh. Clean it up, and I have the payload, which is this one. Mm -hmm. which I also cleared up, and it basically does the fancy operations on all of these things. Mm -hmm. And then I have that one used when I want to. Set the text. So, oh, I have this one. Oh, it does say Eric. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Run so, so you figure out where the the text thing was uh, was called from, I guess. Sort of. I, I I I went for your theory there that there is uh, uh, that you should um, use the same data as on mm. the, as on the Wi-Fi. It seemed reasonable. And if we go here now, then I will press a button to send, connect. Da -da -da -da. It actually starts blinking, and then it doesn't do anything more some reason the the question i have is do we know if it's sending the text as a bitmap no no it doesn't do it, it's i'm pretty sure it doesn't because that would um uh, that would be that would be too big hmm. basically but how does it send images then so then it then it sends multiple messages oh okay so it's chunking it up into 20 bytes and, yeah i mean uh, it's it's um um, 32 times 32 times 3 is 3,000. Oh, let's do it. 32 times 32 times 3. Ah. 3,072. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you have to split that up. And I think that I think the, the maximum transfer unit here is... Uh, 517? Yeah, I think it requests that. Uh -huh. I think it's 5, 515. Okay. Big device. So you can send it, 515 bytes at a time. Yeah. Be probably because uh, there is a fairly new Bluetooth chipset in this one that supports that big one. So, but you still have to chunk up the the, the message. Mm -hmm. And then when you have to chunk up the message, you also have to tag each message with a prefix saying which order it should come and everything, so that when it receives it, it can put it all back together. And then you have to have CRC checks that added at the end of stuff and that's what we what we did here right we when i constructed it the payload here mm -hmm. 
does all those things. And here we calculate the CRC. Oops. Here, we, here we calculate the CRC. Okay. And then we we add we add it all. So we in the final part we we add like the arrays in that order. Then that we rated okay. by, but the, not the actual data in the end. So <clears throat> it's um, the parameters for this one. Yes. Here we go. Here you have the lead frame size. Goes in here. Mm -hmm. That wasn't good. <clears throat> so, so, so I have figured out most of these values here, but like some of them are makes no sense for me. So it's like should CRC is based on uh, if parameter is one, two, three, or four, and that's. <laughs> I guess that's like a I command ID or something. Yeah, I think it's depending on what command it is, it does CRC checks. I think it's because otherwise. Mm. Um, but yeah, if I run this one now, it doesn't it doesn't really write it. So let's comment this one out to make sure that we are. By the way, you, you said you're using Android X Bluetooth, right? Mm -hmm. OK, because there is someone in the chat that was saying that there is a chat pack library for BLE, but it seems abandoned. It's not abandoned. It, yeah. That, that it, it's, it's not abandoned, but it's going slowly. It, it works. It works for this. Um, so, so basically, what you do there is you, you have um, uh, you use a Bluetooth LE as an entry point. You pass mm -hmm. in an application, and then you say connect get. You give it a device. Mm -hmm. Then for that one, the first part here is basically just printing out the services and yeah. get characteristics, which I do here. Yeah. In that sense. Here you have the full UUIDs of the stuff. You remember in the NR NRF Connect application, you just saw mm -hmm. this part. This part is that the, the thing, you, the ID that is used inside the Bluetooth. Oh, it's just the the end of the first yeah, so, part of the UUID. So this part here is well known. Oh, and, okay. And we, is that always the same for every device? Yeah, yeah. you see it's the same on all of these. So. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Is that based on the MAC address? Is that? No, it's based on Bluetooth specification. So it's oh, always. Okay. okay, okay, okay. And, and then there's well-known UUIDs. For instance, mm. this, this is a characteristic for, um, so here we say, I print out the properties here. This one has a notifications support. Yeah. Which means it has a client characteristic configuration descriptor CCCD and that the UUID for that one is always this 2902 and then the same okay well and 2901 and means that's just a descriptor so that's a human readable string that's the oh that's okay. a, the weird the weird ID that we didn't know where it comes right what it was. okay 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 yeah so that's a so but there the are some the magic numbers in the first chunk of the UUID yeah the first part, the upper part here is always zero, it seems. Uh, and then is the that one for with 29. this device or in general? In general. OK. So, so it's only the, the last two bytes of the first group that are meaningful. Yeah. So this is, for instance, the, the 29 stuff are reserved mm -hmm. in the Bluetooth spec. OK. Then you can have pretty much anything you want here. Uh, you might end up having something that is well defined in the Bluetooth specification as well, uh, like mm. a heart rate sensor or something like that. But you know, you just check the Bluetooth spec. What, whatever UUID you pick, you should be in the custom user defined or customizable space. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so what my what idea is that we should try to get that one work. We have I replicated all the code for that one. Uh, mm -hmm. This one I'll just change back to 60 because that was what it was before. We run it again. And clear the logs. Plug it out, plug it in again. Need some encouragement. Aha. So we did write to it here. Okay. And why didn't it do anything? Because well, we didn't get a notification. Why didn't we get a notification? I don't really know. Probably because there was no notification. It was just empty. 
Did you write without callback thing or is just like a normal write? Yeah. So this one is yeah. So the Bluetooth get uh, so Bluetooth X library from Google. What it does is checks the properties and if there is uh, is a, if it supports write with no response, mm -hmm. it will won't wait for any callbacks. It will just write. Oh, I it, see. Yeah. So that that works. So this one, why it doesn't we don't receive anything here is probably because this data is wrong. So there, <laughs> there is no notification and it's probably just closing that thing for us. So it's an error. Uh, I have sometimes received like weird notifications back when I've written weird data, but still difficult to determine what it means. <laughs> I think we can try and fuzz it and see how, how it collapses. <laughs> I think we can try that one instead. The, the turn turn it on and off, and we'll turn. Oh, it I see. Off instead. Uh, one shit. And we'll see here. Now I'm hoping very much that it would work, right? Ah, it does turn off. <laughs> So some of the simpler parts are, are easy enough to, mm -hmm. to reverse. I just need more. to figure out what the... So one thing I was wondering is if you have something like this, I think you can program... This is like a Nordic uh, NRF52840. Uh, essentially, this is like a programmable Bluetooth yeah. device. And I think there is a firmware you can flash on this and use this with something like Wireshark to intercept the traffic in the, in real time. So essentially what you were trying to do with uh, Snoop Log, right? Yeah. So there yeah, there are those like Bluetooth sniffer that sniff, sniff the traffic so going back and forth. Um, but since Bluetooth is encrypted also... Well, not in this you... case. Well, you, then you have to go through that one. So you have to use it like a proxy, sort of. Ah, uh, I see. So probably like that, that's what it work. But I think the easiest way for us, the uh, Android developers, is to get a pixel and flash a user debug, a user, user debug variant of AUSP, mm -hmm. where you can tweak the Bluetooth Snoop log parameters to tell it to do full logging. Right. So you would and have to you... build AUSP with... Uh... Snoop log parameters yeah. set. Or, yeah, or you could you could also use like this uh, the, the the what is it called the uh, in the developer settings there is you can download an image like the debug image. Uh, let me see if I can really? find it for you. Yeah, it's a very cool feature. I didn't know that. I do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> DSU dynamic system. Of, of oh, I see. Okay. So now I don't have anything available for this one here, but uh, in that in that way, uh, I can get like a, the ones the, the images that Google built, and then I can just tweak the uh, Snoop log settings in the system. By like, mm. and where do you get the DSU images? Now I have to open, check here uh, Android DSU images. There it is. This one. Okay. It's on developer. There's like a tool, there's a GSI re release page, and there is like. Oh, okay. So this takes one. in the, the GSIs and then. Yeah. And then there is, you can choose between which variant you want, and there is a user debug variant you can use as well. That's so, cool. and it doesn't affect. It doesn't affect your original installation, so it's when you reboot the device, it's back at normal. So it's nice. Oh, this is really cool. <laughs> yep. Have uh, been using that a lot when I've been, yeah, messing around with uh, system stuff in, in AOSP. So that would be the way I would do it next. I would just get the and get the uh, the Snoop login there, use the official app, and then just do one thing, get the log, interpret what it exactly what it sends, and then try to mm -hmm. guess it from there. So right now, you know, reading the half decompiled code here is it's a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, 
we it's definitely possible uh, I, mean, I i think if, if this would be a slightly better architectured app we probably would have been able to decompile it better <laughs> <laughs> but you know that tends to be the case when you decompile apps that yes i mean yeah. part of it is obviously the fact of the code has gone through a compiler so <laughs> it is probably you know partly in line partly duplicated partly doing weird shit um yes. because it makes sense to the compiler uh i guess especially if you use something like r8 it will definitely change your code oh yeah very likely and and make it look very weird it would work because of course it does but i think the transformations that r8 does for performance can make your code look extremely weird. <laughs> Definitely. I'm going to do that. Yeah. This was another one I mm. had tried. This one should work. But oh, the harder info. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, you got one notification. Yes, this is the one from get the lead device. But mm -hmm. let's comment that one out. Get lead type. And relaunch the app. Uh, is. Um... Channel, I don't remember how channels Whatever. work. Is channel received just receiving one? Yeah, it just receives one. And suspends yeah. until it receives one? Yeah, uh, oh, you have to. It's all of this. You know how, how you can configure your channel to be buffered mm -hmm. or. Yeah. The, the one that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Made it buffered and defaults to buffer 32. But I know also know that it most likely just sends one notification. Uh, so. What you get here is a notification that says that. I see. And this is a hex string then, so it should be formatted like that. But uh, it doesn't say much from that point. So I've been mm -hmm. trying to look at the data and compare to what I get from the, you can see in the code. And it's, you know, it's hard to interpret. It could be that you should like pick out integers from these parts somehow, but you know, it, this would be a very long integer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so. it's probably like a bunch of different things just append well, one to the next. Yeah, most likely some flags. So it's, that's how it's. Oh, right. Does. Yeah, that could be could like a byte mask or a uh, bit mask or something. Yes. Yeah, anyway, um, it's nice to have the new, new Android X library for Bluetooth, even though it's just in alpha and it's not really feature complete. I can't read and write to characteristics, uh, to descriptors, like the bottom mm. things. Uh, but apart from that, it works fine. Uh, I, I would like to be able to determine which type of write operation I should do. So if I go to my write characteristic, uh, where do I have it here? Right now, the actual write operation is just like that. I, you write. Oh, there is no you, other. Yeah. No, there is no parameters for this one to say write with no response or write with response. For instance. I see. I see. I see. That would be nice, but uh, well, you know, um, at least we have something that is like coroutine enabled. And it's... yeah, when you um, in the in the write characteristic. Uh, I saw that it's a suspend function. That yep. um, so when that completes and and returns from the suspension, does that mean that it has physically written all the bytes to the radio, or that they've been transmitted, no. or or what? <laughs> Yes, that would be that would be nice. No, so basically the only confirmation there is that the Bluetooth service running in the system service has has processed your request. Okay. Uh, there is when you have write with response, you have a callback mm -hmm. uh, system APIs where you uh, uh, framework APIs where you 
you get callback saying, okay, the write was successful. You, you do get, get that one when you're doing write with no response as well, but then you get it immediately. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I was going to find... You can actually look at the code for this Android X because it's sort of interesting. Uh, There we have it. So another site I hang out in all days is this one, the source code, <laughs> code search for Android. Uh, so this is a right characteristic it's in the new Android X library. Mm -hmm. uh, so here you see it checks out like all the properties on that characteristic on the framework. Mm -hmm. and then it runs a task, which is a suspend function then, where it writes it, and then it take matching result from the from the callback and see if it works and then uh, if it's get success then it's a result success otherwise it's result failure uh, with a status and this is for those of you who have done uh, bluetooth you know that a common status is like just error which is doesn't say anything and then there is a infamous 133 which is like if you go down docu in the documentation it also says generic error <laughs> so it's very, always very helpful is what you're saying yes yes uh it's super hard to debug this thing uh <laughs> I, I like that they actually do have a comment here in the code for this android x library throw precise reason if we can gather the info I well we'll try that that's a big if i guess <laughs> yeah we tried for a decade we haven't figured it out yet <laughs> hey, I, um, at least they're well intentioned let's put it that way yeah I really hope they will update this one because it it does make things much easier for Billy mm. uh, development. So uh, so yeah, if someone from Google is listening and in touch with the connectivity team, you know, that would be me. <laughs> um, yes. So. Um... Mark saying on the chat, generic error. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, before we uh, we go to uh, wrap up, um, when so how do you debug this stuff? Because it doesn't sound like there is much you can actually do. So if you're saying instead of trying to reverse engineer a uh, device, you're working with your own device. Let's assume you know the protocol because hopefully that you know the protocol of the device you're working with. How do you debug it? How do you but, figure yeah. out when things go wrong, what went wrong? Uh, well, when you get started with this and you're not really familiar, if you have no experience with embedded development and you, mm -hmm. so you don't really know how that works, it's very much trial and error. You run something, it doesn't work, and then you learn from someone that how to reset the device. You keep resetting the device every time you do something. But then you learn more about how like the, the embedded world works there because there's basically just they just basically have a loop where they do stuff and they they read something and they do something and they do that in a loop quickly. And if something goes wrong, they they end up in a state there. So then you have to send something else, and then you learn. So, so you basically you pick up on on these tricks to do the like error handling, manual error handling on the, the peripheral, like the accessory that you're talking to. But and but the debugging on the Android side, yeah, that's it's logcat only. <laughs> like the because good old days. You, you basically you have your app which talks to the system and the system talks to the Bluetooth firmware which sends Bluetooth data. And there is like the communication between the system and your, your app is over the binder. So that's also asynchronous. And so you, you can't just put a breakpoint anywhere because then, you know, that will literally, if you don't use, if you don't wrap stuff in your coroutines and stuff and, and get callbacks off from the, the framework callbacks um i should show you the, the, that method but there is a bluetooth get callback which everyone who does bluetooth ever have worked with knows uh mm. huge huge in this one it has 
you tend to have a lot of functions that you need to implement, and most of them you don't need. <laughs> oh, it's uh, not abstract. It's just an interface. It's a it's a class. It's abstract. Oh, class. okay. But but without well, default implementations. Well, they have like you know the on characteristic changed here, but it was deprecated in API eleven thirty three. So you need okay. both. Of the reason there is there has been a system bug for for a long time with a race condition where the value might be overwritten doesn't really happen in reality it only happens if you have a characteristic which you both read and write to which you as a if you if you define defining a peripheral you should never do that you should always have one for one for reading and one for writing uh, but yeah you need to define all this but before yeah the default behavior is that these callbacks happen on the binder thread and if you block that thread mm. you crash the service connection and on some some vendors, you actually crashed the Bluetooth stacks. So you had to reboot the device back in the days. So that was fun. So, so nice. error handling. The first thing you should do when you start doing this, either you just use this Bluetooth library from Android X now, or you make sure that you always like lift stuff out, off from the callback threads here. Um, there was the list. Uh, I think we talked about that before, uh, but. Um, you have to run on the main thread, you have to run on the background thread, and I also used to believe that it doesn't really matter which thread you're running on when you're making your calls to the Bluetooth okay. stack. Is that because it goes to the through the binder anyway? Yeah, exactly. Oh. It just because that stuff is matter. done in a different process anyway, so it doesn't really yeah, matter. The callbacks you want to be careful with because you might block those and crash the binding. So, so ideally, when you get a callback, you should immediately shoot off to a different thread. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And they do that with the Android X library by default. And then there are like the other wrappers we have out there in the wild. They also do something similar things. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the only one who does it completely safely is the Android X library today. The, maybe okay. some homebrew solutions. Some other people have written. Mm -hmm. So not even the Nordic semiconductors library does it. Fully right. Not hundred percent. There are some things there, uh, but I also find that that one is is that one still in Java, right? I, I think. think so, and I think there might be a Kotlin one as well, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe, I haven't yeah. looked at it in a while. Yeah, me neither. Um, exactly, because when I looked at it the first time, I, I I saw that they had issues with the threading as well as well. So oh. it was wasn't completely good. Um, yeah, but. The thing it it helps to understand how uh, how Billy works mm -hmm. in all these things. What's the characteristics? What's the services? What's the descriptors? How does the ID IDs work? How does enabling notifications work? Um, there is the um, if we again check the the source code for this Android X library just to get an understanding for how <clears throat> notifications work. Is that so? You have this sub subscribe to characteristic. Mm -hmm. And that one does first it says set characteristic notifications, like enable them. But this doesn't send anything to the peripheral. It just tells the system that we are interested in notifications. Mm -hmm. The system service doesn't know that. And then we have to write to the characteristic, the, the CCCD. C -C -C so we write the descriptor here, the value saying that we want to we want notifications enabled. So that's it's a two-step operation in order to get notifications to your app. That's also something many people miss the first time. Okay. Why do you need two steps? Because one is only local, one is only, and the other one is telling yeah. the device to actually send the notifications. Because technically, you could have many apps listening to the same Bluetooth device. That's, okay. that's not that's not disallowed in Android, <laughs> which is. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so yeah, right. <laughs> so so yeah, there are there are um, quirks here that a lot of people are usually not aware of when they get started. So this sounds like a lot of fun. So Indeed. okay, we. We don't have to take the next 20 minutes. We can. But um, what I was thinking is, I 
I would like to understand how, but again, then, then that means that we would need to look more into the decompiled code, which is probably not something we want to do. <laughs> no. Um, because, so in the app, when you when you send some text to the device, you can choose the font, right? Right. And I was wondering, that's why I was asking earlier if it's uh, made with a um, bitmap. Um, uh, yeah. But then now my assumption, like, my question is, is it actually sending the text? Is it sending the text and the font? <laughs> Yeah, so so as I mentioned, you have this base send class yeah. here, which does a lot of and everything I've figured out from the base send class. Those I can get working sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then we had the the more complicated one here that's yeah. in the Wi-Fi class. But we assume that that's the same code that runs. So, uh, so that one has set text. I'll have to find it. Uh, scrolling through someone else's code, you know, it's uh, <laughs> especially giant is, ass files. Here, the send image data, uh -huh. at least and camera data. Uh, we camera have, data, okay, yeah. Here, you have some oh, text, text data. data. So this is the one I, I said. I, ah, I, I, I see, okay, that's the text data, and it passes null in the second what array. What kind of data does it get in? Yeah, that's very uncle. If you step it back, it picks up the text in a text input field, which is the one we. So it's sending UTF-8. Yeah. Wait, is it UTF-8? Yeah. Okay. So it's because the first part of UTF-8 is is, is the same it's as ASCII. Yeah. So you said here you have if I. But it's a Chinese yeah. app, so you would assume that probably yeah. they do, they need Unicode. They can't just send you, ASCII. Yeah, so, and then you have more here. Then you have text effect. Ah, uh, oh, so text setting text. the the so it sends the text, it renders it on the, the on the LED panel, yeah. and then you can also set the other stuff. Set text effect, say text speed, and set text light. That sounds fun. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess you could, can we try one thing? Can we try to set the text from the app and then we can send just like the text effect or, or something sure. like that? Do that. Let's see here first. Restart the device. <laughs> As is the tradition. And I love that connect is a switch here. Yep. <laughs> Because if you have multiple devices, then you can switch. Or, or does it, the question is, we don't know. If you, can you connect it to multiple devices at the same time and would it send it to all of them? Probably. So let's see. You're very yeah. optimistic about this. <laughs> no, And then we back out and then we try to disconnect. Cleanly here, like air. Let's Hoping just, that it makes any difference. Uh, let's force close the app so it doesn't bother us. Mm -hmm. My cat has opinions also. Your cat also has opinions. Yeah. <laughs> but it, and now let's it's see. also a cat, so that's what they do. <laughs> and let's now write, right. That characteristic to our characteristic byte array uh -huh. off and then let's check our code. No, you should not climb there. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be five zero one. The and then one. yeah, the fourth one is the, the last one is the one. actual value. Yeah. Let's if I th I think this one is. That text effect. Okay, so let's let's do this. It's probably
calling that one from somewhere. Yeah. What could it be? Air. And then it takes it takes defect. That works for me. This text effect. It's an int. Of course it is. Is it written from somewhere? Yeah, let's find it. Uh, uh, air value right. Aha. I seven. What is I seven? Oh, that's just a constructor. No, fuck it. Uh, look at the other one, I guess. Oh, there was here. a setter defined, so if you look set, text, uh, the last one, yeah. So if you that's look for one. where this is used. <laughs> Wait, it's not what, that was weird. Find usage. There. Send event text. Yeah, that one was called it. Is this code commented out or what is it? Ah, it's just, it had problem decompiling. Ah, uh, I see. <sighs> and I... Still just an int and this one. <laughs> On callback results. Here. Oh, this like, oh, resets the probably. Yeah, so let's set it to, let's set it to 10. Because, you know, good I one. would set it to one. Okay, let's start with I'm, that. I'm just like assuming that it's going to be like zero is none, and then there's going to be one, two, three, four. I know I I'm think, optimistic. I think it's it's <laughs> like a byte, and then it's just flags for doing stuff. It, it might just be, but I seem to remember there was more than eight. We could set it at 256, and we'll probably get something weird. Okay. Well, maybe it but, enables all of them at the same time. <laughs> uh, that would be weird. Up and down. Oh, yeah, I have it unplug. Plug back in. Woo! Did it that did, right? do anything? Yeah. Can we try sending a random? Wait, we should also, there is one thing we forgot that we should listen for the notification. All oh, right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, set text effect. Oh man, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> Here. Okay. No it's, update. Yeah, it's, it's just writing. It wrote it, but it doesn't get an update, so. It, that might be because it uses the write without confirmation. No, it's that we there there is it's an invalid value, so the device. Is ah, I see, here. I see, I see. But let's say. Uh, can 60. we can we put it in a loop and see which ones don't fuck up? <laughs> no, but then we have to disconnect, and reconnect every time. So it's actually faster just do it. Okay. Like Wait, if you just you cannot just keep writing to the characteristic. No, you can. No, that's a, one thing that you can assume that if you don't get, if your peripheral, like embedded device there, isn't responding, you shouldn't oh. spam it. <laughs> okay. There's some, there's some, I would have totally fucked that up. They have feelings. <laughs> it would catch fire at some point. <laughs> 16 is. Oh, now ah. I got a successful, right? Ooh. You didn't update anything. Maybe it is a so, bit mask say, of some sort. Let's say 256 then. <laughs> 255? Or 255. Hey, why is that not possible? What? Uh -huh. Two byte. And. Otherwise, you could have put like. Okay. I'm I'm curious to see honestly if this does anything. <laughs> Yay. Oh. I've no change. No. <laughs> uh by the way, Mike from the chat says 
thank you, Eric, for your work on the Bluetooth. Uh, it yeah, helped him it was, a lot. Yeah, uh, I did it for the community. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I should, I should, like rewrite all my blog posts. I took them down because they were invalid, and I haven't written anything new. So, one day, maybe. One day, maybe we can uh, corrupt you, like bribe you with some Italian food. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds good. For the greater yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we could keep trying this one, uh, like one twenty-eight. <laughs> Are we going to try all of them by hand? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yes, I agree. It would be nice to do it in a loop, but we can't. Well, we could, like, disconnect, hope we can connect again. But since I need to restart the device every time. Mm -hmm. oh, 128 didn't give us any, any successful, uh, right? Interesting. So what if we have, like, 64? I'm curious to know, like, I'm I'm sure it might be, it must be some kind of like weird constant, yeah, that they've defined I somewhere in the in the original code. By the way, if you actually, if you look for the um, the text of the effect button. Can we try and figure out the value that is associated with that? That's a good idea. Like if you look for breathe. Well, we can take one easier. We have the... Or look the ID, ID of the... X. Uh, effect. Yeah. Uh, let's say down. Down is too generic, maybe? Snowflake? Snowflake. Snowflake. Not like that. Uh, okay. Maybe it's a string reader then. Not here. So oh, it might not be in the project. You might have to look uh, at it yeah. from the finder. Uh, there we have it. Where did I have my downloads folder? Suddenly I can't use a computer. Here we go. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Resource. Uh, values. Where are you? Aren't they here? I say, wait, they're up here. Are they hard coded? No, it's the uh, string resources are different. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, they're, they're in here. here. Here you go. And here you have all the languages. You say, oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? <laughs> That's ambitious. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. Okay. Uh, Can you search in this list? I don't know. If no. you start typing, it doesn't do anything, right? No. No. Uh, well, English here? I think its default is English. First column. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it is. And there. Well, it. I say English, but then <laughs> it's okay, also a bit uh, Chinese. Okay. Request to the Andrew Studio team. Can I get sorting and search here? <laughs> uh, please file a bug, and I'll send it to the right person. <laughs> I think we uh, should. Yeah. Let's see here. Snowflake. Daddy love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is interesting. <laughs> oh uh, my god. Weed? Oh, snowflake, snowflake, snowflake. Effect, effect snowflake. Okay, okay. Let's go back. And let's go back to our decompile code. Effect snowflake. Okay. Uh -huh. Find usage. Yay. Bind data. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> it has a weak reference to the activity? Oh my god. Okay. 
how many how many fragments do you oh yeah let's not question uh, yeah string don't, eight. don't the string eight where is it where are you set <laughs> okay oh it adds it to a recycler view oh no uh, <laughs> why is that a recycler view it's a grid layout yeah of course it is <laughs> okay so there must be an adapter somewhere right mode adapter aha i'm guessing and convert string b mm -hmm. oof Oof. Uh, and we here have effect. Position one, two, seven, or eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so alpha. That's set in the alpha of the holder, but it doesn't sound. Is there anything else on? Is select is selected. Okay. Is this a string? Interesting. It's just a string. So Data. is if you go back to where the adapter is used, does does it have like a on click setup or something that like that? Mode adapter extends from recycler a recycler adapter? Okay. Uh -huh. On item click. <laughs> of okay, course. Okay, so there must be something. We were in text activity, if that helps. There you go. Emoji M color dial iOS dialogue style. <laughs> I love this text effect fragment. Here we go. There Mode. you go. Text okay. fragment add listener view I on item click. So uh, I is the position, I think, is the index, yeah. right? Object data string. Okay. Where are you? And then the you... string is not used, but the position is. Well, here we have the get lead type, which would be nice to know. Ah, if only. And then it events. I. Okay, so it's just an index. It's from like zero to whatever, That's eight. True. Right. And the app had like. I'm going to count five. them. Five, I think. Uh, it's nine, actually. Nine. Well, it starts with, okay, well, let's see. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Oops. Let's see if we make Eric a laser. Come on. Nope. No. Does it also need to start the effect? Maybe, but I haven't found any command for that. Huh. There is there is no an exit command, but that one kind of like doesn't do anything. It might also be that we need to do the get lead type first because you know that's what the app does. Right. I don't think it's necessary because I mean we don't use that data. That's the light intensity. I don't think you need to set. Oh no! Yeah, that was the wrong one. Get lead type. There we go. Restart. <laughs> oh man, I I really want to get this to work now. I'm really annoyed that we cannot get it to work. There is a oh. blinking thing for connecting, and it then doesn't seem to do anything. Yeah. Damn. Ah. <gasps> ah. So uh, uh, I was really hoping for this to work. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, unless I'm misunderstanding, should I use just a general one here? Like, mm. I don't know. 
You can also do unlimited and YOLO the shit out of it, but... Yeah, but the buffer is 64, so it should be fine. Should be more than enough. But what if we take... We'll try the... We'll try the default one, just... Yeah. Like that. Just to make sure that we're not misinterpreting how to use channel. I mean, it could be. You never know. Okay. Successfully wrote. Yeah, but it didn't get a notification. Yeah, oh, there we got a notification. Get yeah. lead type. And then we successfully wrote the other thing, but okay. we didn't get a notification. Out. And it's not an update. I'm very sad. <laughs> two. <laughs> so two would be move right. Are you zero indexing or one indexing? Zero indexing. Yeah, well, let's think one indexing. Because oh. zero would be. One indexing would be move left. Yeah, but because fixed is the first one, then I'm assuming that it's zero indexed. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know. Uh, Eric, we need to figure this protocol out and then come back and explain it. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, I mean, we, we probably can. Uh, I. I just need my test device, which I don't have function. I, I, when, when you keep flashing devices with AOSP, eventually they stop responding to you. They apparently don't like to be treated that way all the time. So I have a few in my drawer here. Do you mean like you, you wore out all your older pixels? Yep. Hey, maybe <laughs> next month there's a new one coming out and you have an excuse to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a funny story. I actually, I actually bought the the Fairphone for this purpose. I could replace stuff that breaks. <laughs> no, um, as you see here, like it's also kind of shaky the code that we have here. So yeah. uh, sometimes I get notifications, sometimes I don't. So I think it's like wait, why is, it, here, here, why is it writing eight bytes? On it should be five bytes. Right. And it's also, it also doesn't seem like any of them is like five zero zero, so five zero one, whatever. Well, that's a hex and hex form of the number. Uh, but yeah, but the X of five is still five. Oh yeah, true. Wait, why why is that misbehaving? Eric? Oh wait, it's this, this one. It's, this one is written first. Oh, Eight. okay, okay, okay. Byte mean value. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, but we're only getting the callback for the first one. Yeah, and we're not getting the notification. We're not getting that one uh, this time. So I bet you if we run this one again... <laughs> it will just fail slightly differently. Yep. So here is another thing that sometimes uh, this one might be so slow so that you need to calm down. <laughs> Basically add a small latency in between. I can do like this. No, because oh, they're writing stuff too fast to it. You mean? Yeah. So let's delay. A hundred should be fine. <laughs> well, now we're not getting there. Yeah. Yeah. We're as not you see, it's even getting there. Highly. Okay. So there is something really fucked with this. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, it writes the first one, but never. So now we're not getting the notifications about the lead type. So okay, <clears throat> that would have been nice. But... Yeah, we must have fucked it in some way. Probably. Oh well, we broke something. <laughs> but but if we did just the first one, that was the second one here. Is that the text effect? It actually did respond, I think. No, just me being. But that was when we had nine. We used sure to do it like this. Did send yeah. something, but
I think we broke the channel actually. That's probably the thing. Mm. Should be this one. Are you like sure that. that's the capacity? Yeah, because if the default value is rendezvous. <laughs> hmm. I don't feel expert enough on the channel API, so I, no, I have not same. Enough. I uh, used it and it worked, and then that was all I looked into. <laughs> Go back to our buffered one, it should at least go back to the starting point. Uh, I'm so annoyed that we didn't get it to work. Yeah, but this is the work with Bluetooth, so. <laughs> you mean it's just an existence of pain and suffering yep. and trial and error and hoping for the best? There we go. Well. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. So now it's sad. Anyway. Maybe you did fuck up the the stack. <laughs> yeah. That that could actually be a thing that I need to plug it out and then you leave it out plugged out for like ten seconds or fifteen thirty minutes or thirty seconds or something so that everything is forgotten in it. But <laughs> that happens also. Uh just plugging it out back and forth, sometimes it's not enough. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's wrap it up for today, Eric. I'd say we have done enough. We have suffered enough. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I mean, it was interesting to see how things don't necessarily follow, you know, your normal everyday logic when you're dealing with Bluetooth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's more like oh, it should do that, but maybe it doesn't. But then it does. But then it doesn't, and you don't know why it does or it doesn't. It just does or doesn't. <laughs> oh yeah. So for anyone who hasn't been doing work on Bluetooth, they probably recognize all these problems that you're getting and <laughs> the challenges you have. So <laughs> damn. Oh well. Well. Well, maybe in a month or two, we'll we'll have something figured out that we can show. Who knows? Well, we I want to believe. Be. Want to believe. <laughs> if someone wants to make a try for this one, I can. We can send you the reference to where to get the display. I, I think it costs like twenty five dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like a cheap AliExpress, whatever. Um, one thing I think would be interesting would be to try and write some documentation for this. Uh, or and or have like a small repo where we have the, the test app and then we can just try hacking on top of it. I don't I think we should be that. sharing the decompiled <laughs> APK, but you can decompile it yourself yes. and figure out how things work. It's also interesting to learn how to decompile APKs. So, Yeah, it is. Yeah, I will definitely upload this to a repo somewhere and some, someone else can try it out uh, and enjoy the complexity <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the maybe joy. clean up my app also so that it's you know not tied to the view model as it is now but maybe that's a bad thing to have yeah. where you have your i don't know i i was thinking you know what, what what would be even more interesting and probably even worse is to use uh, web bluetooth <laughs> instead of an app <laughs> i actually started with that one Ah, but I'd managed to crash Chrome so many times. So I had, I, I have like multiple profiles. So every time I had to restart, I watch all my profile. Yeah, so no. <laughs> it was a good idea on paper, but then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric, thank you very much for coming. Um, it's been very, very fun, uh, but also very frustrating. <laughs> and I, I see that this is the norm with Bluetooth. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I felt this was going to happen. this is for a device we don't know. So you can imagine it's yeah. pretty much the same for a device you do know. <laughs> Ooh. But then you maybe have, have contact with someone who can tell you what 
thing to do to reset yeah. stuff. You know what would be interesting would be to open that thing up and see what the fuck is inside and maybe try to figure out what SDK they're using. Yeah, have have you checked it? It's like it's it's very solid. It's yeah, like it's it's like really metal cheap, it's, or something. It's 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 uh, well, it's plastic here, but I'm, I was also thought about cutting it up. So uh, is I it did like find, molded? Yeah, something. I think they. I think the whole back piece is one solid thing, and then they have like pushed in the stuff from. Oh, the top. So I see. I so it's a destructive it. analysis, yeah. pretty much. Well, maybe I don't know. Uh, and and the, another fun thing is this USB cable. It's that's the longest USB cable I have right, right now. I think it's like it's like three meters it's or something. It's super long. Yeah, it's super long. Yeah. It goes from there all the way down and then crosses to my computer, and I still have like another good chunk. That's the amount of cable I have. <laughs> uh, oh, well. I'm gonna put the link to the item on Aliexpress that. in the chat. <clears throat> so if people want to figure out what the hell this is, they can and try. Will, Good I'll luck. I'll my code to my GitHub, Eric Hellman, uh, <laughs> later today. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, folks, we are not going to see each other next week because it's the 1st of May and it's a public holiday. Uh, if it isn't in your country, sorry. Uh, it should be everywhere, Sorry, but I don't know. Uh, I think in the UK, it's probably the following Monday. Uh -huh. uh, because they only do public holidays on a Monday, except for Christmas. <laughs> and New Year's Eve. <laughs> and technically the 26th of December, that's Boxing Day. I don't know. The UK has its own rules. They do the their thing. Um... So yeah, we'll see you in two weeks and uh, we're going to recover the, the stream that we missed uh, with Chet because he was sick. I see a theme. Everyone is just bailing, saying that they're <laughs> sick. First Chet, now even. Next time, who knows? <laughs> okay, and this is... is um... Yeah, I don't know. Eric, I'll, I'll see you at some conference at some point soon. Uh, yes. And uh, that's going to be interesting. I know we're going to end up talking Bluetooth the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see it at a conference, <laughs> run away. We're right. probably talking Bluetooth. <laughs> right now, my Bluetooth headset gave up. Ah, we said Bluetooth too many times. <laughs> okay, Eric, thank you very much. And uh, talk soon. Everyone, have a good one. Bye.